Hello, this is Ms. Hall. And Ms. Nelson. We're starting solving two-step equations today. You should have your small foldable and um, fold it in half and cut one um, line right here so you have two different doors. The top is solving two-step equations. The bottom is solving two-step inequalities. We'll get to that later. So on the solving two-step equations. So you want to isolate the variable and determine the opposite operation. You will add or subtract first, then multiply or divide. Make sure you apply to both sides. In order to keep your equation even, equal, if you do it to one side, you must do it to the other side of the equation. Then you solve for the variable. So let's um, do some examples to show, um, to demonstrate what these steps mean. Okay, so our first example is 2p plus 14 equals 18. So we guys, ha we have given you boxes for you to solve these in until you get comfortable to where you can remove the boxes and be able to solve the equation um, and line up your work um, to be able to solve it. So the first thing we're going to do is write our equation in the box, 2p plus 14 equals 18. Okay. So, like Ms. Hall said, we're going to add or subtract first. Because they added 14 to it, I need to get to get I need to get to this variable p by itself, so I'm going to subtract 14 from both sides. When I do that, I'm left over with a 2p on the left, and 18 minus 14 is 4. So now I need to multiply or divide. Currently the 2 and the p are being multiplied. If they are pushed together, that means they're being multiplied. So the opposite of multiplication is division. I'm going to divide it by whatever is connected to the p. You will always do that and divide that side by 2. So this leaves me with p equals 4 divided by 2 is 2. So p equals 2. Our next example is negative 6 tenths r minus negative 12 hundredths equals 1.8. Clay, Chloe, could you please uh, meet room, please? Need you in your room. Thank you. All right, okay. so just ignore that. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's after school. So, let's first write our equation up at the top. We're in the box that says equation. So, we have negative 0.6r minus 0.12 hundredths equals 1.8. So, again, we want to isolate our variable. We want this 0.6, this negative 0.6r by itself. And so, we are going to get rid of, we need to get rid of this negative 12 hundredths. So, they subtracted opposite operations we are going to add 12 hundredths to both sides. Now remember to line up your decimals when you're adding decimals. So our new equation, this can't zeros each other's out. These are zero pairs. So we have negative 6 tenths r equals 1.92. So when we talked about when there is a number that is attached to the, the variable, we call that a coefficient. When the coefficient is attached like this, it is, that means they multiplied. So oper opposite operations, if they multiplied, we are going to divide. We want to get rid of this negative 2, so that negative goes with it as well. So we're going to divide both sides by negative 6 tenths. So remember, any number over itself becomes our big 1. So all we have left over here is 1r. Now I don't know what this is, so I'm going to come out over here on the side, top in, bottom out, remember your negative. Now when I'm dividing decimals, if I have a decimal in on the outside, I have to move it over and make it a whole number. However many times I move it over, I have to move over the one in the, on the, under in the house as well. Go ahead and put that decimal right above it so we don't forget. 6 goes into 18, uh, 19 three times, and it is 18. Subtract, bring down my 2. Now 6 goes into 12 twice. I'm dividing a negative by a positive, so my answer is a negative. So I have r equals negative 3.2.
Okay, so now we have some fractions involved, okay? And I know most of you think that fractions are scary, but they're actually a little bit easier to work with because everything just cancels and goes away. So we have x over 8 plus 4 equals 3. So I'm going to rewrite that in my boxes. Now, just like normal, they are adding a 4, so I need to subtract a 4 first. That will zero out, subtract a 4. This leaves me with x over 8. 3 minus 4, you can either think of your algebra tiles or your number line. That's going to give me a negative 1. Okay? Now, because this 8 is in the bottom and it is a fraction, that means that they are currently dividing. So the opposite of dividing is going to be multiplication. Okay? So when we multiply, what I like to do is I set it up, and I'm kind of going to skip this box right here because I do it all up here in the top. I'm going to multiply it by an 8 over 1. My 8's will cancel out and I'm going to be left with an x. Over here, since I multiplied this side by a positive 8, I'm going to multiply this side by a positive 8. And a negative 1 times 8 is a negative 8. So x equals negative 8. Okay, our last example, 2 thirds n plus 4 equals 10. Okay. So let's not even worry about the variable right now. We need to get it by itself, so we need to get rid of this positive 4. So they added, so we're going to subtract. Remember to do it on both sides of the equation. So all we have left over here is 2 thirds in. This cancels out. Those are zero pairs. Equals 6. So um, now they multiplied by a um, fraction two-thirds. In order to make any fraction one, because we only want one in over here, we multiply by the reciprocal. By the reciprocal, we mean we flip this um, equation. And I'm going to demonstrate this over here. So two-thirds times three over two. If you multiply those, um, it becomes six over six. And we know any number over itself is our big one, so that becomes one. So that's why we flip and multiply by the reciprocal. So I'm going to do what Ms. Um, Nelson did. I'm going to do it up here in this box. I am multiplying, but I'm multiplying by the reciprocal. Okay, these cancel each other out. All I have left over here is one in. I'm going to come out over here and I'm going to multiply these. I'm going to make that 6 an improper fraction. 6 times 3, 18. 1 times 2, 2. And that equals 9. So n equals 9. Please finish your notes. Make sure you fold them. Glue them into your spiral. And if you have questions, come to class tomorrow with questions. Thank you.